So Philip is getting more and more powerful. By 346, he's kind of bullied and bribed his way into being part of what's called the Greek Delphic Council, which is a loose conglomeration of representatives from different Greek poleis, um, allows him to exert a lot of influence over them. And a whole variety of authors step back and they think about how can they assess this? What, who is Philip? Is he Greek? Is he not? What does he mean for us? By 351, so actually before this point, a guy by the name of Demosthenes in Athens starts delivering what are known as the Philippics, a series of speeches warning the Greeks about the Macedonians and how they're a threat to Greek liberty. Um, he also writes three texts after that called the Olynthiacs, which are all directed at trying to get the Greeks to stand up against a potential new foreign conqueror, this time not Persia, but Macedonians. On the flip side, there's another individual by the name of Isocrates, who steps back and kind of figures this from a slightly different perspective. So a couple of the readings that you're going to have are comparing Demosthenes and Isocrates and thinking about, are the Macedonians Greek or not? What do they mean for our independence and our liberty? Should we be aligned with Philip or should we be trying to avoid him? How does the context in which we are writing shape what we should do? So that's kind of what I want you to think about for this here. What ends up happening is that eventually Philip becomes powerful enough to march his army to the south. And what ends up happening is that at a place called Chironia in Greece, a Greek army of about 35,000 infantry and 2,000 cavalry, people on horseback, meet a Macedonian army that is only slightly larger, probably about 30,000 infantry and 2,000 cavalry. And the Macedonians end up winning hand over feet. Um, and defeating the Athenian and the Theban contingents, who are the, the kind of the basis of the Greek resistance, huge losses. Ancient Roman and ancient Greek historians consider this battle, the Battle of Chironea, which happens on the 2nd of August, 338 BC, the end of Greek liberty and history. Philip installs a Macedonian garrison in Greece. He controls pretty much the entire area of mainland Greece, with the exception of Sparta, who was able to hold out against him. He dies shortly thereafter, and his son Alexander picks up where he leaves off.